I want to make you aware of the an, an important change, at least that's the way I see it, on the UBA app, the 2.4 app. Uh, I just installed that in my 731 system and the main change has to do here with the way you configure it. Let me show you what I mean. This is the UBA settings. You put your token here as before, the, the trigger to fire offense is the same, the decay factor over time is the same, you know, the data range for the graphic detail. Uh, that's nothing remarkable. What is remarkable to me at least is this area of dealing with the table, the, the LDAP table. In the past, honestly, I did not fully grasp the way that you made the connection between, you know, the, the user data in the LDAP and what you want uh, UBA to recognize with. I'm going to show you how you generate that and how you import a table. I'm even going to provide you with a sample table. You can actually play and test this on your, uh, for example, on your Curator CE if you want. What I love is this part here. User coalescing is a is a is a sophisticated way of saying this is how I'm going to make sure that I recognize that, for example, uh, Sterling Jones here, our friend Sterling, uh, can be recognized by his email address. Sterling is a very knowledgeable guy, so ask me anything uh, that at IBM.com would be his email. But I can recognize Sterling by S. Jones, which is his login. Uh, on, in Linux, or uh, two applications that have a username and a user, you know, Jones337 or uh, this uh, ID for the user. What this means is that Curator, when it gets logs from uh, user identity coming from any one of these fields that I selected in here, is going to recognize that they all belong to Sterling and they are going to add the risk for uh, Sterling. This uh, section here is basically what you want the the uh, the user to be recognized upon so uh, when you actually do that I'm not gonna save this configuration I just wanted to show you I just did that when you go into the UBA app what you get is you know for example in here Sterling notice the aliases is ask me you know the email address the the actual uh, different logins and and when we see the risk that sterling has contributed to actually 2250 so still below the threshold to fire an offense we notice that all these are things that come from different log sources again because the different identifiers were there and uba combined them and had all this risk uh, for that particular user Again, let's go back to the admin portion of it to show you how you will set this up from scratch. So when you go here into UBA settings, you, you have the option of selecting none. I don't, I don't want Curator to coalesce any one of those users. Or you can actually specify, yes, I have a reference table that I want to use. As, that's what I import from my LDAP. If you don't have an LDAP ready, that's the trick I'm going to show you uh, in a minute, uh, how to use us. Notice that we use here AD data, right? That's a table that I imported before that has seven users. How I did that? Well, you go to the API, and I'm going to create a second table for that. You go on the reference data you go on to tables because it's a table what you actually want to uh, create and you're going to do a post because you are creating a table so you scroll down and there are two parameters that you actually need one is the type of entry and this is going to be alphanumeric and that's what the ALN uh, comes here you can actually see the the details on the right and you're going to specify a name for the table so I'm going to call it AD1 dash data instead of the one that I created and actually go ahead and do a try it out and I get a 201 in that table is being created now we need to populate the 
table. And to do that, and I'm going to provide a link in the video description uh, with this particular file. This is a JSON file with seven users. Let me actually show you that in more detail. So here I have those seven users defined. And notice that, uh, you know, speaking again on, on my friend Sterling, uh, this is the entry for Sterling. And here are the JSON parameters. The one that we are more in interested in are email. And that's the email address, the full name, the username, the Linux login, the distinguished name, which I'm not using in this demo, and that username. And there's other fields like the apartment, etc. So how do you put that? Well, all you need to do is to take this entry and you can modify it uh, as you please for your environment. And you go back to the actual uh, table that you just created. And when you span here on the tables, you need to go to here to bulk load, right? So, and if you go into book load, you're going to be again doing a post because you want to put uh, data in it. Uh, you need to actually expand and go into under the name because you need to specify the name of the table that you want to add the stuff. And this is going to be AD1 underscore data that we just created a minute ago. And then here is where you're going to be pasting the content of that JSON file. So if I did this all right, and then I click try out, you get a 200, meaning that table has been created. And all those entries are in there. And if you want to verify that, you, you go here under the name, actually, not under book load. You scroll down, you specify the name, AD1 underscore data is the name we gave it. And you try that out and makes the API call. And here is that entry for all those uh, guys that we just added. You see, let me scroll down until we see and picking on Sterling. It should be here with all the entries here. You see the spring well. OK. Uh, It might be the last one. Here we see all the individual entries, and you can you can actually use the API to change a field and you know all that uh, all that good stuff. We keep scrolling down, and here's you know Sterling ask me anything at IBM.com. So so once you have created that table, then is when you can actually go into the admin console and select it in here. Notice that in, in here, I should be having the yeah, AD1 data that we just created and populated. Once you do that, you can go underneath on the user coalescing and select the fields that you want this to be notified. I, I, I really enjoy this, this uh, uh, simple setting of the UBA, particularly because I, I, one of the things that I love about UBA is the fact that I, it, it takes all these different user IDs that Curator picked from all the different log events and combine them into the, the single entity. And this is how you set it up. From, from the API, you can also delete the table. I mean, I'm going to delete, for example, that particular uh, table that uh, I just uh, created. So I go under tables, name, and I have the option for delete to be, you know, careful of what you do here. Uh, so I'm going to delete that AD1 underscore data that I uh, just created. Let me, yep. And that table is actually deleted. Uh, so again, I encourage you to try this. Uh, you can do it on the community edition version. Uh, and, and make sure that you begin to leverage the LDAP integration that uh, that UBA uh, uses.